So the whole idea behind this series is that we're using the ragas, an Indian musical form, as a template for how we approach the blues. And to a lot of people, this might not make any sense. And I mean, I'm just going to ask you to take on faith that when I studied the ragas, it helped me understand literally every other kind of music I've come across. Um, I've been able to apply those ideas to, you know, old music, to music from all over the world. It's not a perfect way to describe everything, but the blues is probably the closest type of music that I've found to the ragas. And it's, it's actually really weird because the ragas and the blues really didn't develop anywhere geographically near each other, but this the rules of the ragas apply so well to how the blues works. It's really uncanny. So um, I have a feeling if you dive into this, you're going to find the same thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to start out with explaining. When you learn a raga, there's a couple things you do right off the bat. The first thing you study about a raga is, you know, the scale. What notes are you using for it? And once you've taken care of that, then the teacher tells you which notes are the most important. In the raga. Now, some of that comes from just the way people hear music. Certain intervals just sound more stable and more normal to people, no matter where they're from. But then also when you play the ragas, you learn to do certain tricks to make other notes sound more important than other ones. So you learn about this hierarchy of notes within the raga, which are the big notes, which are the little notes, and which are the, quote, wrong notes, too. And then you, you learn the chalons next. And the chalons are kind of how you make the notes sound at these different levels of importance. And these chalons are, these are the DNA phrases. And the way you kind of know that something's a chalon, I've mentioned this a little bit before, is that it's usually between two and four notes. It's not usually one note, it's not usually five notes, it's usually two, three, or four notes. And there, these couple notes are played in a very specific way. The way you do the slide or the way you do the bend is, is always very, very specific. And for someone who has grown up listening to whatever kind of music you're playing, uh, they can usually identify what kind of music you're playing right away just by the way these couple of notes are playing. It's a very catchy sound. You know, that's really how you define what a chalon is. Just a couple notes played in a very special way and it really characterizes the sound of the genre so much that someone can know what it is right away if they know what you're playing. And it's really funny because this this idea appeals to a very universal characteristic of musical language. It's why raga theory works for so many things. I'm not going to get into that too much here, but I just want you to understand that it's a it, it's something universal about musical language that this appeals to, and that's why it works for so many um, types of music. Uh, and the most important theory you need to understand about ragas as we go on uh, with this series is this concept of parallel interval structures. I'm going to explain this by uh, teaching you a little bit about rag yaman. Yaman's one of the first rags you learn when you study North Indian classical music. It's based on a Lydian scale. If we're doing it in E, it's like E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. And um, just because of the way humans perceive intervals, this root and this fifth, they tend to sound like very, very stable notes. But when you're taught Yaman, you're taught to make the seventh degree of the scale, this D sharp and this G sharp, to sound like the main notes. And uh, the way you do that is you, is you use this particular phrase. It goes like this. It's kind of a funny phrase, because you're starting down here. This is the root. You start right below the root. You kind of skip over it. But it's kind of that avoiding the root that kind of makes Yaman sound neat. It's the weirdness that makes it unique. And, and the way this, uh, this chalan gets expanded throughout the raga is through a parallel interval structure. You see, with, with, this, um, with the root in a Lydian scale, right below it. The note right below it is a half step below. And then the two notes above it are whole steps apart. And the funny thing is, if you look at the fifth degree of the scale, let's be here, the same interval structures occur on the on the sides of it. Below it, it's a half step. It's a whole step and then another whole step above it. Exactly the same way it was at the root. So you can play that same little melodic phrase in both places. You can go. And you can go. And you see it sounds kind of similar, but not exactly the same. And so that's a way of expanding this really basic idea in a way that's familiar to the ear, but kind of makes it feel a little more interesting than if you just played the same thing again and again. And this is how the ragas develop. They start with these very, very simple ideas, and they use the natural hierarchy of notes 
to expand them in a very simple way. And this appeals to the ear. The ear tends to like simple things, simple sounds, very um, finite ways of using notes, only moving between notes in certain ways. That's what makes like tonal music sound sweet. And you know, as you get more advanced with this type of music, you start to use more and more different ways of using the phrases, more advanced relationships, more and more wrong notes. Like by the time you get to jazz, jazz basically in a way plays all the wrong notes on purpose. That's part of what makes it sound interesting because it's really playing with really, really heavy dissonances a lot. And um, more advanced listeners tend to like that. But when you're starting out with melodic music, uh, people tend to like to hear simpler things, and the ragas is really, really good at that. It helps you figure out how to expand a very simple idea in a way that still sounds really good, but you know do, that minimizes the amount of material you have to use. And so when you're learning cellons, you learn how to use parallel interval structures to create these feelings. So uh, yeah, that, that, um, that explains the most important things about raga theory. Let me, I think we're ready to go on and talk about the DNA phrases now.